What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of the Pack Only Road to Foot Champs. On the screen you can see the team that we're taking into the next game and of course on the bench is the second team. I showed both the teams a couple of episodes ago. If you don't know what this series is because there's a lot of new viewers that come to the channel every day and a lot of new people that start watching this series every day. Uh, this series is an account where basically I started an account where I wanted to do something that was super challenging because, you know, it's, it's relatively easy. If you're a decent player in FIFA, it's relatively easy to generate coins, get good teams and uh, just really advance yourself. So I wanted to give myself something that would be a challenge. That challenge was to make an account where the aim was to play in foot champs using only pack pulled players. So I am not allowed to use the transfer market for anything unless it's selling items to generate coins to buy packs. So the process is play games, earn coins and rewards, open packs, sell things I don't want, keep players that I can use and play in foot champs. If I need position modifiers, they have to be packed. If I need chemistry styles, they have to be packed. If I need new players, fitness cards, any kind of consumable, it all has to be packed. So um, here we are. There's a playlist in the description below if you missed from episode one. It's definitely well worth a watch because the progression has been super, super quick. Like we're only in what, episode 22 or 23 or something. And we've also got, we've already got a couple of really good squads. We've got some fantastic players. We've packed some big informs. No walkouts yet, but we've got a fair few 85 rated players. We've got a big inform in Jovatic. We've got Matic. Kante upgraded, Smalling, Otamendi, uh, Hector Berry, Luke Shaw. Like we are missing just a couple of key players from having like a super, super team. And one of the biggest problems I had this weekend league is we go nine and two after that game. One of the biggest problems I found myself having is as my ELO goes up or my skill points go up, I don't I don't know exactly how it works, right? And, and I don't think you guys know. I think EA know, but they're very reluctant to give out the information. However it works, I'm coming up against more difficult opponents each week. I can feel it. Because my teams are getting better, but my results are, in, in essence, getting worse, right? I'm not winning as many games. Like three weekend leagues ago, or maybe four weekend leagues ago, I finished with 14 wins and five losses. And that was with a team that had just no good players. I was playing like players way out of position. I had only 70-odd chemistry, and I was, I was demolishing people. And although right now I come up against some players that I beat quite comfortably, the, the tier of players I'm coming up against, I've added a few as friends to look at their records where they finished previous weeks and stuff. I'm coming up against people that finish in like gold one and elite standard. So what happens is the team that I've got, especially players like Callum Wilson and Benteke and Jermaine Defoe, they're just not... They're not, they don't fit the meta. They're not good enough to carry me through games. Like the amount of times I've missed chances with Scherler or Wilson or Hernandez when, you know, somebody like Anthony Martial would have put it in the back of the net or William would have put it in the back of the net. I need, like, I'm a couple of players away. I can feel it. A few players away from being able to just dominate and, and do what I do on my Road to Glory account. And I'm super excited because once we get two teams I'm looking for, I'm looking for two really good interchangeable teams so that I could just rotate. I'm then going to clean out the club of every other player and basically start stacking coins and or packs for Team of the Season. I know Team of the Season is quite a considerable uh, distance away from us right now, but because of how slow-paced this ca account is, because I can't buy cards, I can't trade, I can't do anything like that, I've got to get prepared well in advance. Um, so we talked a little bit about, in the last episode, we talked a little bit about um, um, d trading all my non-rares in for the gold upgrade packs. And I, I was reluctant to do it because I was kind of hesitant in, in the fact that sometimes those players are worth quite a bit, so they'd be more beneficial to sell them. And uh, so I might be able to use them in SBCs. But on reflection, I was sitting there thinking about it and I'm thinking like, well, how, how am I really going to complete some of these SBCs? It would require a lot of effort. What a goal that was from Jovic, by the way. It would require like many, many hours put into this account of spamming bronze packs, doing the bronze to silver upgrade, the silver to gold upgrade, and hoping to get the right players. And then also hoping to get 20 teams worth of the right players. It's not going to be something that's easy. Um, so I think what I'd rather do is count myself out of the player SBCs like the Suarez, like the Lacazette, as much as I'd love them on this account, and rather get get packs prepared for uh, team of the season so that we can get good players to fit this team during team of the season. 
Uh, so that's kind of like my aim, my plan. Um, it, I may well change. Obviously, if you guys have got an input on that, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Love, you know, love the input of you guys. I think is very important to the series. But uh, that's kind of where my head is at the moment. As as I say, you know, it's at the moment. It's, it's very much. I could I could quite easily change my opinion. No problem at all. Um, just touching on the last episode real quick, we were talking about position changes and uh, Gustav Clays says, I don't like that you can change a CDM to a striker but not a right wing to a striker and you're a legend net. Well, thank you, dude. I appreciate that. What, what, what frustrates me the most about this is that you can, like the way chemistry works from positions, you can generate, you can, you can create a striker or you could take a striker and you can turn him into a CDM, right? So that already is like way out of position. But you can play a CDM at centre-back on seven chemistry. So effectively, you can play a striker at centre-back on seven chemistry. But you can't play a left wing at cam on more than four chemistry. I don't get it. Um, you know, like the way, like for example, Chelsea play. You might see Eden Hazard in that cam spot from time to time. You might see Pedro in that cam spot or Willian. Like sometimes they, they play like three, three cams with a striker like, you know, a left attacking cam, a right attacking cam, and a central cam. And so Eden Hazard, who's a left wing, plays in game at cam, or a striker, at some, you know, even a striker sometimes. But you can't put Eden Hazard, the left winger, at cam on more than four chemistry. But you can play Jermaine Defoe at centre-back on seven chemistry. I don't get it. I just, I don't think it's very well thought out. Um, and some change would be nice. The same Toby says, I had 18 wins from 38 games in foot champs in the f and it's the first time I've qualified. Is that any good? That is fantastic, dude. Um, I think if you're able to hit gold at all, whether it takes you all 40 games or whether it takes you the, the first 18 games, I think gold is a really good benchmark to hit. I think that puts you in a really good tier of players. Um, you know, I complain about my weekend league results on my Road to Glory account a lot and I get elite basically every week, like anywhere from elite three to elite two. Sometimes I get 33 or 34 wins. Um, I've never made it top 100 and on the odd occasion I'll drop out of elite and I'll finish gold one and I complain like oh man I got 30, only 30 wins this week I feel like I should have done better and people like like get angry at me because they can't even qualify like they're like oh look at you complaining about getting your 100,000 coins your 100k pack and your premium team of the week pack and here I am unable to, to win four games to even qualify for foot champs so when when you like when you consider it that deeply Getting 18 wins is brilliant. Like you, you, you are you. Like I know it's like bang average in the sense of you are, you've won half your games. You know you've won 18 out of 38. Let, let's give you the benefit of the doubt and say you would have won the last two, so you've won 20 out of 40. You've won 50% of your games in foot champs. Well, it only requires about a 68%, I think, ratio to get to gold one. Uh, 25 out of 40 games. I don't, you know, I don't know specifically how much that is off the top of my head, but I would assume it's anywhere from like 62 to 68 percent. So you're you're this close. You're this close to being able to, uh, you know, to be able to um, get into gold one. And and then when you consider elite, elite is like 73 percent of your games, right? 75 percent gets you 30 wins. So 29 wins is for elite. So if you're able to get 50 percent wins, you're you're within 25% of considering yourself as an elite player. And, and trust me, dude, elite is no joke. It's difficult to get to elite. It requires a lot of like composure, a lot of dedication, a lot of consistency. It requires a lot of attention. And um, you're, you're almost there. You're close to being there. You know, you're, you're one good weekend league away from considering yourself one of the better players in the game in the world which I think is fantastic, dude. So keep it up. And to everyone else that's getting gold or even getting silver and struggling to get in there, just remember, dude, you're, you're close, man. You're close to being able... You're close to being a very, very good player, which is phenomenal. Vaughan says, Yo, Nep, last night I started wondering something. So we all know that stat pace is how fast a player is and physical is how strong a player is, but what did a passing stat and dribbling stat say? Love from Norway. Well, this was interesting discussion for me, but I, I first want to just like preface this with the fact that Pace isn't exactly how fast a player is. There are a lot of things that come into contention with pace. So acceleration and sprint speed make up the pace stat and people overlook massively sprint speed specifically. We talked about this last episode, you know, you could have someone with 85 pace that actually has 78 sprint speed. So they're actually slow. They just get to be slow very quick. And then you could have someone with 85 pace who has um, maybe 90 sprint speed and 70 or 75 or 78 or whatever, 80 uh, uh, 
uh, acceleration. So they're really fast. It just takes them a little bit longer to become really fast. Um, also, on top of that, uh, reactions, uh, agility, and balance are very, very important when it comes to how fast a player is. I don't know exactly how it works again because the lack of information from EA, but that's the situation at hand. And, and again, with physical, physical stat isn't just strength. It's also aggression, jumping, and stamina. Um, but I think the, the strength category is, plays primary role. What, watch this goal, by the way. This is Eric Cantona-esque. What a goal that is. Um, so, uh, what, what, but, but more to your point, what does passing stat and dribbling stat stay? I, I agree. Like, what, what does it mean when you've got 80 short passing versus 90 short passing? What do they each represent? Does, like, I, I would like to know, if I have 80 short passing and make a short pass from A to B and then replicate that exact same example with 90 short passing from A to B, is, is the pass going to be one degree off? Is it going to be a little bit faster or a little bit slower? Is it going to be completely in the wrong direction? You know, how, like what does it impact? I would genuinely, genuinely love to know how each individual stat impacts the game and why. Because when you learn those things, you can, really, I say genuinely too much, I need to stop. You can really piece together a team that absolutely fits your style of play and will make you a better player. Because if you're the kind of guy that really does enjoy a lot of short passing, but the short passing stat at 99 for some reason is worse than having the short passing stat at 85, and that might sound crazy, but trust me, there's things in this game that are like that, um, then you, you, you deserve that, that knowledge, that information. But EA just, they just refuse to give it to us, and I, I don't get it. Um, John Boyd says, and this is a good one, because I want your guys' opinions on this one in the comment section. John Boyd says, hey Nep, who do you think Player of the Month will be this month? I personally think that Kane will get it, but I was wondering your opinion and if it is a good idea to invest for it now. Keep up the good work. Much love from Scotland. You're too late on investments, dude. Don't waste your coins. Um, lots of people have already had like done the investing. Once the Player of the Month is announced, all those investments are going to get dumped. You're going to lose money, right? The hype is over for Player of the Month, in my opinion. I could be wrong, but that's my opinion. Um, who do I think is going to win it? I, I honestly don't know. I don't know. Um, like the the two likely choices are Kane and um, Kane and Lukaku. McCauley's got a good chance, right? Because one clean sheet and two goals, both of those goals being the winning goals for a team like West Brom, he might just get it. But also, I think the dark horse might be Gabriel Jesus. He come out of nowhere, new transfer, start, scored a couple of important goals for City, and generally played phenomenally. I don't know if if like Kane's. One goal in one game and three goals in another game and generally mediocre performances outside of the goals is going to be enough for him. Just like I don't know if Lukaku's five goals is going to be enough because four of them were in the same game. It's called player of the month, not player of the great game plus a few average games. Does that make sense? Um, so my, my, my gut instinct is telling me it's going to be Lukaku. Um, but... I would not be surprised if it was Gabriel Jesus. It, I really, really wouldn't be surprised if Gabriel Jesus was the guy who came out with a Player of the Month card. And if people have invested then for Kane or for, for Lukaku, who are probably like the, the obvious two choices, they're going to be screwed when you're going to need Brazilian players and such. So maybe there's an opportunity to, to invest in Gabriel Jesus being Player of the Month, dude. But um, generally speaking... I don't know. My, I, I want it to be Lukaku, right? Because for my Road to Glory account, Lukaku will be amazing in that team. He'll fit the team. He'll slot straight into centre midfield for me, funnily enough. Um, I don't mind if it's Kane either, because very much the same. Harry Kane will go into my team, no problem at all. Um, I would love it to be Gabriel Jesus. I, I would, as, 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 Due to the fact that I wouldn't use him, I, I don't really want it to be uh, McCauley, but I would love it to be a defender. I would love it to be McCauley for the simple fact that I don't want it to just be attackers all the damn time, you know? Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, thank you for your comment. And let me know in the comment section, guys, who you think um, will be player of the month. RP111 says, Hey, Nep, can you enter the draft on this account? They're fun to watch and you get 50k pack for winning, so you get some usable players. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, assuming I win and then assuming I get the good prize of a 50k pack. But yeah, I will be doing some draft on this account now. Uh, you know, we, we've got a couple of good teams. We don't have to qualify for the weekend league anymore because I make sure I get to gold. So that gives me some time in the week to do a draft on this account. But uh, yeah, ultimately, we will, uh, we will eventually do that. So we finish up here, guys, on 14 wins. 
and five losses. As per usual, I'm not showing the losses on this uh, on this series. We're only showing the wins just to reduce the amount of videos and the length of videos that get put out. So we're 14 and five, which I think is phenomenal on an account where we've not bought any players and just opened packs and not even open packs with FIFA points, just the coins we've earned. I was very, very, very impressed with the record of 14 and five. Um, considering I was only 16 and 4 on my main account, or 15 and 5 on my main account, or my Road to Glory account that I call my main account, or whatever. But um, yeah, so there you have it, guys. 14 wins out of 19 games. We only need four more for Gold 1. I might push on to Gold 2 this week. We'll have to wait and see. But this, guys, will be the end of the video. So if you have enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like rating, a comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.